Hello and welcome to this tutorial. At the time of recording this tutorial, Raspberry Pi just released a new version of the Raspberry Pi operating system and it is called Raspberry Pi Bookworm. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to set it up in Raspberry Pi and also how to set it up in headless form. This will also work if you have the Raspberry Pi Boots Eye or Raspberry or any other version. And this tutorial, I'm going to be using a Raspberry Pi 4. This will also work if you have the Raspberry Pi 3 or any other version. So once you have your Raspberry Pi, an SD card and a password for your Raspberry Pi. Let's get straight into it. There are different ways you can use to set up your Raspberry Pi operating system and your Raspberry Pi. In the previous tutorial, I spoke about having a downloaded version of the Raspberry Pi OS and manually writing it to the SD card. But in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi Imager to write my Raspberry Pi operating system to the Raspberry Pi. So in case you have your Raspberry Pi operating system already downloaded as an image file, you can check this tutorial and I will drop a link to it in the tutorial description. So let's get straight into it. To set up your Raspberry Pi, the first thing you want to do is to grab the Raspberry Pi Imager from the raspberrypi.com website. So to do that, simply go to raspberrypi.com and you can check through the website to learn more about Raspberry Pi, but you just want to download the Raspberry Pi Imager. So I'll click on Software. And then the first thing we have here is the Raspberry Pi OS. And there are different ways of getting this done. And as I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi Imager method here. So the first thing we have here is to install the Raspberry Pi OS using the Raspberry Pi Imager. Depending on the OS computer that you are running it on, you can download for Windows, for Mac, or for Ubuntu. I'm currently on Windows, so I'll just click on Download for Windows. And then your download is going to start once. So once you are done downloading, simply click on the installation file and you can install it. It's very straightforward. It doesn't take much time. And once you are done installing, I'll just open it up, Raspberry Pi Imager. So before you do this, you should have, have already an SD card plugged into your computer where you want to load the operating system. This can be 8 gig or 16 gig, 32 gig or above. So now I've opened it up after downloading the Raspberry Pi Imager. I have it open there. So the first thing you have to do is to select a device. So this is the Raspberry Pi device that you have with you. I just click on choose device and you have the different variants of Raspberry Pi here. Currently I'm running on the Raspberry Pi 4. So I'll click on Raspberry Pi 4 and also you can choose the operating system. I just advise to choose for the latest one, which is the recommended one. I just click on the Raspberry Pi Bookworm and then choose storage. So as I said, you should have your SD card plugged into your computer by now. So I have my SD card plugged in. It's an 8GB SD card. So I choose mass storage device USB device and click on next. So a question is going to be popped up here, which is, would you like to apply OS customization settings? So in this particular option, just click on edit settings and then we are going to be changing these parameters. So I want to set a host name. So click on this option. I have just leave it as raspberry pi dot local. I always prefer using raspberry pi dot local. And also we have to set a username and password. This is very important and very crucial. So we have to set a username and password. So I'll just give it the default username that used to come with raspberry pi naturally, which is pi. And then the password, I call it Raspberry Pi, depending on whatever you want. Also, you can configure local area network. So if you want your Raspberry Pi to automatically connect to the internet or to your router, I'll just click on this. And then type the name of my internet and then give it a password. So the name is OIC. And the password. So that's the password. Also, you can set this is also important for you to set so that you will connect seamlessly to the LAN network. So set local settings. This is Africa Lagos and the keyboard is US type. So after finishing with the general tab, just click on services and click on enable SSH. So let all this be as default. Make sure you click on enable SSH and you can click on save. So once you are done with this just click on 
yes and then it will say all existing data on the device to be erased i show you to continue yes want to continue and this will start writing so this might take just a mm, couple of time so once you are done you must as verify is fully set up i'll just fast forward this and then come back once it's done So now it's done. So we're going to wait for it to verify. This is going to run from one also to one hundred percent. So just wait. Once that is done, we proceed. So once it's done finalizing and it has been verified, we're going to have this prompt that says. Raspberry Pi has been waiting to mass storage device USB device and you can now remove the SD card from the reader. So once you have this, meaning that your operating system has been successfully written to the SD card. I'll just click on continue and I can close this now. So with this, we are done with the operating system right into the SD card. We just remove the SD card and then plug it to the Raspberry Pi straight. So one thing that we did during the setup is that we enabled SSH under the surface settings and since we already enabled SSH, we can connect using our laptop to the Raspberry Pi without the use of monitor, keyboard or mouse. But if you have a keyboard or mouse now, you can just plug in to the Raspberry Pi and then plug in your SD card and you'll be good to go. But in this tutorial, I'm going to be connecting to my Raspberry Pi via headless. And the other reason why I needed to set up my LAN connection was because I'm going to be connecting my laptop and my Raspberry Pi to the same network so that I can access the Raspberry Pi via SSH. Also, I've already set up the Raspberry Pi hostname, which is Raspberry Pi dot local, and also the password. So I'm going to be using these details to set up my Raspberry Pi in headless form. After setting up our Raspberry Pi operating system on the SD card, there are a few other things that we need to do before we can access the Raspberry Pi in the headless form. And we need to grab some softwares that will enable us to do that. So we are going to be using three softwares basically. We are going to be using Putty, BNC, Viewer, and also Apple Printer Services. So I'll just go ahead and download these softwares. So the first thing we are going to need is Putty. Just go to Putty Download and you can click on Download. I'll just click on Download Putty here and then you have Putty installed on your laptop. Also, I'll be using BNCs. So BNC will allow us to access the graphical user interface of the Raspberry Pi. So again, I click on download BNC and I'm on Windows. So I'm going to select for Windows and download BNC viewer. So once you also download, once you have this downloaded, you can install it and you'll be good to go. And lastly, I'm going to be grabbing a software called Apple Printer Services. So Apple Printer Services. So I'll click on download Bonju printer services and you can click on download. Also, once you are done, you'll be able to you'll be able to install this and you'll be good to go. So once you have downloaded and installed these three softwares, Putty, VNC Fuel, and Bonju Printer Services, and you have them installed on your computer, you can access Raspberry Pi in a less form. So once you have this software set up, you can plug in the SD card into your Raspberry Pi and power it up. Make sure your Raspberry Pi and your computer are connected to the same network as we've set up while setting up the Raspberry Pi operating system. Once you've powered up your Raspberry Pi, wait a little while while it connects to your network. Once it has successfully connected to the network, it means you are good to go and then you can now access your Raspberry Pi via SSH. First, we're able to access our Raspberry Pi via SSH. We are going to be using one of the softwares that we downloaded the right time, which is Putty. So, after installing Putty, just open it up. So, you have an interface that looks like this. And then you can now type, the, type in the host name that we used while setting up our Raspberry Pi operating system. So, I use the host name Raspberry Pi.local, if you remember. Raspberry Pi.local. So leave everything else as default. The port is 22, SSH, and then you can click on open. 
so then we are going to have this you might be prompted with some security questions just click on accept and then you have this terminal let me minimize this so here it says login as so we are going to be typing the name and password that we configured for our for our raspberry pi while setting up using the raspberry pi imager so i use pi as the name and i use raspberry pi pi as the password so once we have successfully logged in using the host name and the password you will be given this prompt that says pi at raspberry pi depending on your host name and your raspberry pi's name so to show you that i'm already inside my raspberry pi i can use sudo raspi config to access the settings and i have my raspberry pi settings so before i uh, end this tutorial i'll just show you how to access the graphical user interface using vnc server so it's going to simply come to interface options and select the second one which is vnc and it's going to ask you will you like the VNC server to be enabled select yes and just wait a little bit and it says that the VNC server is enabled so once we have the VNC server enabled we can now access the graphical user interface of our Raspberry, of our Raspberry Pi using VNC viewer so again one of the software that we downloaded was VNC viewer so open up VNC viewer and you'll be provided with a prompt where you can type in the host name of your device i'm still going to type in the same host name which is raspberry pi local so type this in and so it's going to give me this prompt i'll just click on continue and then the username is automatically pi and i'm still going to enter the same password that i used during what is logging in yeah, and I have the Raspberry Pi operating system displayed here so this is the GUI of my Raspberry, of my Raspberry Pi and I can access the terminal via ssh i can also access the terminal here just by clicking on terminal and i have access to the terminal the same thing as i had during port software's use so that's basically it on how you can connect your raspberry pi first thing we did was to write our operating system to a raspberry pi using raspberry pi major and then we set up our, our laptop and raspberry pi by installing some softwares on our laptop that we can use to access the raspberry pi via headless we installed the port software VNC server and also the Apple printer services software. So that's basically it guys on how to access your Raspberry Pi in headless form and how you can connect your operating system to your Raspberry Pi using the Raspberry Pi imager. If you find this tutorial useful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share with anyone that might need it. And thank you guys for joining me in this tutorial. Thanks so much. Just click on the subscription button, please. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.